C-C-N-T-C-S-A-G-P-H-Y-K question. Bingo. I feel exactly like Blast is jamming us right now. So basically, first we want to get a sentence, right? We want to get a sentence of at least 30 plus letters. That means that whoever rolls the first one, it's a capital letter. It's the beginning of the sentence. So we have a capital G. This is like a game show, right? We're gonna make a genetic sequence. One letter at a time. Do you want it to be G A T or G A C? G A C. G A C. Okay. There's so few Q's. I mean, I think they chose Q for glutamine because it looks like a G, but it's not glycine, which already has the G. So I said you can substitute O, but for the database we need to use Q, so this could be GGQ or GGO. And you have to roll that. Yes, go for this. A, A, A. And then we should probably get used to saying these. What is that? That's lysine, right? Comes out of yeast that's made genetically to create more healthy lysine than usual. Hi. Oh, I like that. Q or O? Yeah, Q or O. Every time you find a sort of rule base, if you look closer, there are eccentricities. It's just built into nature. I like that. So, okay, who's next? We got a lower bill of stress. The cop. Is it? Okay, give me a drum roll. This is high risk. High stage. Oh, we got another cysteine. TGC. Wow. Uh, AAT. AAT. Is this like a mirror phase that we're in? Or we're like uh, emulating our own transcription of our own genes? Or is this like a power trip? Or actually, is this um, is this like a drag queen? You know what I mean? Are we putting on nature's clothes? Or is it starting to be oh, C. we're getting a lot of C's. Uh, TGC. TGC. TCC. 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 convenience, decide which stop codon. Do we want a period, an exclamation point, or a question mark? Question mark. So T-A-G, question mark. Our sentence is capital D, D, Q or O, K, Q or O, Q or O, A, C, C, N, T, C, S, A, G, B, H, Y, K, question mark. So the first assignment for the continuation of this picture is right next to that, is to draw what that says as an image. Okay, so now we have to make words of this, right? Make sense of this. I started with a D-like figure, and from there it just evolves. I'm, I had to think of the word uh, dock as a shipping dock. 
uh, in the beginning we have the DDLK and I thought the ship is a container ship and it's like a, a holding all the DNA genes and strings, something like that. De lange sloot uh, papier met allerlei allemaal cijfertjes. Allemaal cijfertjes. Ja, maar ja. Not organs like orifices. Uh huh. Mucus producing bacteria living on an orifice. <laughs> oh, okay. And does it relate to the text for you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. You are a data miner. That's cool. <laughs> so now, what are you drawing? This is the account. So th this is the account is in here. He's in his dark room. Yeah. He's doing some calculations uh -huh. on the way. You know, developing some some pictures. You can draw a picture of anything. Yeah, I was I was just. Uh, yeah, the void it works too. You're allowed. Yeah, there's no message. It's possible. Yeah. Q K Q is quack. Yeah, quack quack, going very fast. Uh huh. Okay. Maybe those are those redundancies. They're a little different each one. Yeah, but from here I got the idea of um, uh, yeah, chocolate, cacao, cocoa. Uh -huh. And this is a ship full of DNA. Mm -hmm. um, and. The, it's, it's being closed into the station, it can send signals or something, I don't know exactly. More interesting at this point is something called sequencing. The way scientists used to figure out a DNA sequence was by labeling AT, G and C with radioactive isotopes. And the radioactive isotopes would separate out the... the, the uh, base pairs, one base pair at a time, and put them on x-ray. You get an x-ray, and it would look like this. It looks a lot like DNA fingerprinting right now, right? Much like what we're doing here in this lab right now, I have been in labs where they're trying to isolate a gene. How do you think 10 scientists that are on the same paper agree what this is as a sequence? You know what they do? They sit down together in a room and they go through this just like what we're doing. All 15,000. And then they, they put them together next to each other and say, is it the same sequence? Because if all 10 of us got the same sequence, then we can publish. Right? This is the kind of data they get right, on a computer screen. And it's very much like what we're doing. Right? In other words, if we zoom in, you can see underneath it, right? See down there? Last is the basic local alignment search tool. It's an online software. It's free for people to use. It's a part of the community of mine, right? These are what, they're, what are called workhorses. The workhorses of molecular biology are the organisms that genomes got sequenced first, that they studied in the lab, and that um, are mirrors of us. In other words, they use them to try to understand humans. Of course, these are the totem animals of molecular biology, right? They're called workhorses and they're heavily studied. If you just type in BLAST and NCBI, BLAST is the basic local alignment search tool which finds regions of local similarity between sequences. Program compares and play or protein from sequences to sequence databases and calculates the statistical significance of matches. It can be used to infer functional and evolutionary relationships between sequences as well as help identify members of gene family. So this is what we want to try. <clears throat> I'm trying a little bit of a different one. Psyblast. I chose this for you, Gina. It's called Psyblast. And I'm not sure if it'll work. I'm not sure if it works, but we'll give it a whirl, okay? Nobody press here, right? Okay, hey, we got some. Oh, it says no hits now. Alright, let's see if this works. Well, then, oh, it says that's not protein, that's DNA. So we got it right the first time. So 
I'm going to do this randomly. I don't know what this does, but I'm putting it like I'm filtering. Maybe we should filter true instead of false. Um, <clears throat> if you get a result and there's nothing to compare it to, that's good. In other words, we found a sequence that isn't in the database yet. Yeah, no one's seen this before. It hasn't been found. Queen All Anne. the genomes that they sequenced, and we saw that it's like 30 or 40 something of major workhorses, right? So this actually is important. This is a company. You're a partner in gene synthesis. I contacted them and I said, can we get gene synthesis and maybe even get what we have here written into a plasmid so we can put it inside of a E. coli and have the E. coli reproduce it. And they said, send us the sequence and we'll check it in our database to see if it's pathogenic. It may not coincide with any known pathogen, but it also doesn't coincide with any known sequence. So how can we risk assess since it's based on chance? We'll check it out. Anyway, we're going to send it to them, just so you know. Hi, we have an unknown sequence. And give us an art student price to manufacture the plasmid. with this sequence in it. What is a plasmid? Anybody know? A plasmid is a circular piece of DNA that E. coli used to email each other with. They email genes to each other through plasmids. <clears throat> it's infectious. Oh my god, it's the weirdest thing. Most E. coli in the lab is F negative. F positive means that the E. coli has hair. There's hairy E. coli and E. coli that's bald. And the hairy E. coli has hair called F. pili, which is why they're F positive. And the F. pili are hairs, but their hairs are hollow. And when a hairy E. coli reaches one of its F. pili hairs out to a hairless E. coli, it shoots a plasmid down the hollow hair into the other E. coli, and that E. coli starts to get hairy. Yeah, so it's a kind of sex. If you could imagine, every time a man made love to a woman, the woman would turn into a man. Homo Loki. Homo Loki, yeah. And the homo loki. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're sending, right? We're sending them our sequence. I'm going to take down this one. You really have an unusual sequence, huh? What if I take off this? I don't trust this because it's not working at all. Should we try the cross species megablast? Wow. Something's wrong. I feel like we're being jammed at last. <laughs> How is this possible? I mean, come on. I do think we might be being jammed by blast. Let's view the report. I'm going to try once more. I'm going to blast one. We're going to do a protein blast. In the protein data bank. We want to use the default settings everywhere. And it's pulling up the transcript. The reason it takes a while is because the transcript, it shows where it is in the human chromosome. And you can click into the chromosome for different genes. So we're looking for PAN2, right? This one was transcribed by Celera, a company, right? A company that actually challenged the US government uh, public genome sequencing project to a private privately run corporate ended up working with them but only reluctantly and <coughs> kept he still charges so eventually if you get too deep in this you're gonna have to pay 
Craig Vander. Please draw Homo sapiens pan to poly A specific ribonuclease subunit. How do you data mine art? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Is it without algorithmically? Okay, so we actually have rolled a sequence that has in, in has some homology with BP forty four six eight five three full length enriched swine cDNA library for the adult liver suscrofa cDNA clone LDR zero one zero zero three one G O eight five negative mRNA sequence. Mm. So. I mean, you can actually like research this. Um, Suscrofa, you can look up, but also it happens to have a PubMed number and a contact person, right? Who happens to be a Japanese scientist in the Animal Genome Laboratory, Genome Research Department um, in AgroBio, right? So you can actually get this guy's email or phone number. Here it is. Right? There's his email. You can email him and say like, hey man, we rolled a sequence today and we got a homology for your, well, we don't know exactly what this is, right? We drew pictures of it, but maybe you could tell me about it. This is actually funky research, right? Like a strange way to research. Um, because this guy's waiting for someone to say, I'm interested in your research. He wrote that paper, he published, he will not perish, but he's like, completely ignored. There's only 12 people in the world that understand him. And you write him and say, like, I drew a picture of your full length of rich swine cDNA library of the adult liver. Uh, do you want to see it? You know? Do you want to see it? He's going to be like, yeah. Um, so let's, let's draw that. I'm going to try to draw a full length and rich swine cDNA library of an adult liver. Take a couple of minutes. All right. It can be quick and dirty. Black. Well, take a look at this. They've got the original sequence there. Doesn't look that different from what we've been doing, does it? You notice? If I type, if I pull this out and go into Microsoft Word, I may find our sequence. You understand what I'm saying? It's a strange world. How about that sweet orange leaf? What else have we got? Coffee Arabica. Japanese lotus pod. Right? Tilapia. Yeah, okay, so let's draw some tilapia liver. So look, we've got lotus, coffee, absinthe. All of a sudden we're making waves. And tilapia. This sounds like a good dinner. You know? I have a contact in Japan. I guess it's just the pod, right? And they made a clone of it. So we have it in the human, right? And we have it in the, in the coffee. coffee. <laughs> this is by human <laughs> drink coffee, of course. That, that's yeah. it's it's good. Good. to fill with ourselves. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let me see. I want to do this last one more time with the full sequence because I feel like I'm cheating, even though there's no such thing as cheating because we're, we're, this is an art class. GIC, CIA, AAA, CIA, CIG, GCG, TGT. Wait, hold on, CAG, GCT, TIT, TIT, AAA, TIT. Okay. <clears throat> but just because your sequence coincides with homologies, etc., doesn't mean, even if you find out actually one of the pathways of the expression of this gene into a protein and what it does, it doesn't mean that you understand what's going on. Scientists would be out of a job if understanding came full force, right? In other words, like, we've got to keep checking. Our sequence is all the same, it's a cDNA clone of. Lattes calif cal carifa. I'm going to zero in on it, but I'm also going to um, look it up. 
Barramundi Perch actually seems to be our sequences familiar, right? For real. A Barramundi Perch. Latis Calafari. And this guy's lab, we're actually going to have to contact these people. In Malaysia, right? This guy, Adura, is our new friend. <laughs> Like, he's going to hear from us. You guys know that, right? After class, I'm going to write it. I can write him right now if you want. You guys want to help me compose a letter? Yeah. Let's, let's write him a letter. <laughs> this is our animal familiar of the day. We rolled it right here in class. This is the Barramundi perch. And this is the Barramundi filet. <laughs> and this is the giant Barramundi. So this is actually the fish that has the sequence that we rolled here. That's on our paper that we translated to like Dodo who could come to Dobi CS sausage broth. Take some time to draw not just the Barramundi perch, but we're gonna have to find out where in the Barramundi perch the sequence, the cDNA library or this messenger RNA has been found to be used. I'm not sure if it says. We gotta inform ourselves. Ident okay, so this is the paper that it's written up in. Is that possible? It's from Gene 411. It's a brain transcriptome. It says, identification and analysis of a pre-pro chicken gonadotropin releasing hormone 2, otherwise known as pre-proc GnRH2, precursor in the Asian sea bass, Lattes calcarifer, otherwise known as the Barramundi, um, based on an EST assessment of its brain transcriptome. That's some heavy stuff. Do you think we can draw that just for five minutes? I know we've been doing a lot of drawing. This is the last, this is going to finish all of our drawings. Pre-pro chicken gonadotropin releasing hormone precursor in the Asian sea bass. I'll pull up the fish on the side. Gonadotropin. It's a brain hormone, I believe, but you know, let's check. I'm gonna just add to your drawing. This is sort of, I wanna let you know, this is called alternative research, like research methods for weirdos, but uh, gonadotropin. Half of what I know about biology comes from random walking like this. Luteinizing hormone. So yeah, it actually decides your gender to some extent, right? Uh, it's secreted in the brain, in, in humans, in the pituitary gland, right? So if you're studying gonadotropin in a fish or in a chicken, you're actually studying it um, maybe to get some extra for people with hormone deficiency. They do. I happen to know, like, it helps with the formation of the genitals. But also there's a third human gonadotropin produced in, by the placenta during pregnancy. It's taken from the urine of postmenopausal women. Well, it says it can sp stimulate spermatogenesis, the making of sperm. Yeah, it can make sperm and eggs for ovulation and help with fertility. But anyway, so throw a little gonadotropin in there and maybe some um, sperm genesis and ovulation, right? Coming from this chicken fish uh, EST. And it's in the pituitary gland in humans. So is, is it in a homolog for the pituitary gland in the fish, right? An ancient evolutionary pituitary gland that um, has been steadily developing in both fish and humans from perhaps, perhaps it was a separate organism before the brain formed, right? Glands in our brain, what are they doing there? Where did they come from? It may be. What we say? What should we say? The sequence that we rolled <laughs> happens to be in the wow. sea bass in Malaysia. And it says, using a novel library of express sequence tags, or ESTs, from the brain tissue of the Asian sea bass, we characterize the brain transcriptome for this, get this, quote unquote, economically important species. <laughs> Forget the brains, you know. But um, obviously we have found a hormone related brain neurotransmitter, well, brain, a gene that relates to hormone 
release in the brain that also relates to fertility. Well, we have uh, DD, so we've got a double dog attached uh, at the behind um, with, that's with some quacking ducks, and they're inverse, so they're one on top of the other. Um, we have lots of accents of different languages spoken by the quacks and the, and the dogs. Um, here we have the, the Homo sapien pan squared um, with a ribonucleus subunit. Lots of subunits and subunits. And this is just some kind of brain mapping texture <laughs> with a transcriptor fish swimming out of it. And then some coffee stains. Yeah, I um, translated all the letters and colors and forms and they started growing, growing out yeah, randomly. And sometimes um, the purple Ds came out of a green line, but then they also come out of a red line. And the orange Ds came first out of red lines, but then <coughs> started growing out, out of purple Ds. It's all a new kind of um, chocolate uh, cocoa bean. But then when you spit it, the inside is different, so maybe we get a new taste if we make chocolate out of it. I thought there was some kind of chicken in the fish, which um, um, it poured out uh, hormones. I think it's in the stomach. Um, my sentence is a container ship full of crates that uh, hold uh, different kinds of DNA. Uh, this station is trying to give meaning to what's all on the ship. And then the fish, yeah, it's like loose from it, but don't have this is more abstract, I don't know. Cannot explain this. He also saw the dark room of the accountant. That's basically what the, what the sentence says here in Dutch. Uh, the, the, swine, uh, the swine liver here. Uh, we have the, um, what was it like, the messenger uh, RNA or the rab nucleotic acid, something like that. And we have the fish here. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So uh, we kind of figure out what he was doing later on because he was obviously developing all those pictures. Oh, definitely. That's what the account was doing in the server. Yeah. This is the pan gene. That's pan for me. It's like the satyr. So that's pan too. That's the little pan that lives in your head. But this is the gene, this is the gland in the fish's brain that produces the luteinizing hormone that adds fertility, as you can see maybe through PAN2, uh, comparable to the chicken, similar chicken hormone producing, um, that actually this hormone produces sperm and eggs. That is that he divided the painting in very strict uh, regions of difference. One uh, with the colors, one with uh, the dodo, one with uh, something that has to do with sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, and it all comes together uh, referring to, uh, to the messenger DNA a messenger RNA, which is traveling from one strand to the other, co compiling the protein. From this, I try to remember what I saw here and how to draw the, the sentence in this circle. Yeah, I saw them like star signs. Uh -huh. Yeah, like they are constellations. Right? Constellations, uh -huh. yeah. And, and, and as a matter of fact, this way of reading is very ancient. Like if we see them as const star constellations. So I was looking at this like, what is the perspective if we, if we look, if we draw it down like this? Is it from the human perspective that we see the code of the DNA or can we see the code from within the DNA? Uh -huh. So, oh, yeah. I, like no, I was just trying to, to take the perspective of the specific uh, fish yeah. brain. And the three-dimensional shape is only when it's crystallized. Actually, these proteins, proteins move all the time. Three-dimensional. They're three-dimensional and they're in motion. Yeah. I like the, the idea of that we had the fish because it's an underwater. And so in the water you don't maybe know that above the water there is another world. You see clearly see its hormone being released inside of the range of our perch. Um, this one was just a free association, but you clearly see subunit one, which we were supposed to uh, draw. This was like um, the swine thing, so it's very amorph, except for its nose. <laughs>
Oh, and I thought, Q-cake, Q, that reminds me of Cocorico, right? Of a cock. And then I wrote, I read further, and then it suddenly said, U-H-Y. So I said, U -A -Y U eat a cock. We don't know exactly what we're doing when we alter genes, okay? Um, I do know that there's, if you put your finger in a river, you change the river. If you decide not to put your finger in the river, you're also doing something that causes change by refusing to act, is an action. So it's actually a very difficult situation that we're in. There is no way for us to not affect the world. But it's enough, I think, to teach right now at least, <clears throat> that chance is built into life. So when you mess with chance, you mess with what the, you mess with the muses, right? Um, that's okay. There's a long history of uh, heroes and victims messing with the muses, right? Um, but be aware that uh, you may not know what you're doing, right? I guess the meaning of these labs, for the most part, is to both demystify and remystify DNA at the same time, but also to let you know the complexity. So when someone says, well, there's a gene for schizophrenia, and we should just get rid of that. Mm -hmm. That you say like, well now, hold on. You know, genes aren't just one to one. You know, just getting rid of that isn't a simple procedure, and you're affecting, you know, the entire human genome. And without schizophrenia, we wouldn't have disco. You know, or like, uh, really cool free associations. Or art, for that matter, right? So, slow down. That kind of thing. So I hope I can transmit that to you. This is the this is the satay kambing made of the goat that was used for the tissue culture lab last Wednesday. Well, it was Tuesday, sorry. So it's fermented a little. <laughs> Only organic stuff. Yeah, second. Uh, right oh, there. it's alright. Put it there. I can, I can put some in the sauté. Uh, 